Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Heto Alessa, Solutions Architect from AWS, joined by Phil from Paul Ringo. Hi, Phil. Hi, how are you? Really good. How about yourself? I'm good, thank you. So, Phil, tell us about what does Paul Ringo do? Yeah, so um, Paul Ringo is a group-based messaging app, and the user joins our app and comes into our groups and discovers whatever groups they're interested in, be it art, music, football, whatever they're interested in. And they join a group, and they talk to other people within that group about mm -hmm. whatever they're interested in that day. And does that have any games as well on top of that so people can play with them, with your friends? Yeah, so we have also games that you can play. We have a high-load car game that's quite popular. And we also have um, what we call bots, which customize kind of the experience of the group. So we have a welcome bot. So as you join the group, you get told okay, to welcome, welcome to the group and also what the rules of that group is, if there's any rules. How many users are you having on this app? I presume you have lots of those. Yeah, so we have 50 million signed up users. And at peak time, we're processing about 1,500 messages. Wow, so that means scalability, availability, and performance is actually a three key pillars for you. Absolutely, they're fundamental to offering a good experience to our users. Fantastic. So Phil, I see that you have this architecture here, and can you explain to us how all of this play together? Sure. So um, we'll start with the actual app. So the app connects to our, our entire architecture mm -hmm. by one of two protocol versions. Protocol V2, which is our kind of legacy version, and Protocol V3, which is our new version. Okay. Protocol 3 is a fully WebSocket microservice architecture, mm -hmm. so therefore it sends all of its requests onto ECS. Okay. Uh, the V2 protocol is uh, a legacy platform, our old monolithic, mm -hmm. so uh, the ELB sends that off to a deployed version of that software okay. on EC2 instances. And I can see that you run multiple programming languages on ECS as well, on Docker containers, they have Node.js and Java. Yeah, so we generally run whatever's uh, great for the job or whatever the dev dev team is mm -hmm. using, mm -hmm. and it's either Node or Java. So Phil, uh, I see there's this RabbitMQ over here. Is that something you use to connect to applications? Yeah, so it connects the two versions of our platform together, mm -hmm. the V2 and the V3. It's also where the topic, the conversation topic lives. So it's okay. where we broadcast out to the members of the group what somebody else has spoken. Okay, so you have lots of these messages then, and I guess that's why you have Kinesis Analytics over here. How do you get this data over here? So what we have is we have a Node.js application that is pulling out the data from there into the Node.js app, mm -hmm. and in turn, sending that into a Kinesis stream. And what, because it's a Kinesis Analytics, you get all of this data, what do you do that? Do you run some sort of a queries on top of that to get something more? Yeah, so the main benefit us of using analytics is that it's uh, SQL basically compatible. So we can do some basic SQL style uh, analytics of the messaging, message counts, number of words spoken, mm -hmm. um, and then process the content of the messages to see how great or how good the group is. Hang on, you said about word counts and spoken and especially how good or bad a group is. Yes. Does that mean that you also look for behaviors like this is a good behavior, this is a bad behavior, bad words, something like that? Exactly, this? so to appear high up in the uh, discovery section of an app, mm -hmm. you have to be of, it has to be a good group and be a kind group. So mm -hmm. we want to enhance that and if it's a bad group, we obviously want to, to put that down further down the recommendation list. And then I presume that Lambda over here is mostly for processing all of these data that are coming from the Kinesis Analytics? Yeah, so we use it as a bit of glue, really, to hold some of the, um, the architects together. So we take the, uh, the analytics outputs mm -hmm. as a batch, and we process a little bit more of that batch, and we send it off to another microservice that we call Group Stats. Oh. And that, again, is, uh, that one is actually a Java application. And that's holding all the stat information mm -hmm. and all of those quotes from the groups if you're a public group. And that is how the users will see a statistics. Okay, so that comes full circle. Kind of like, I understand that. So you have the mobile app that you have two different versions. One is the new version, the legacy actually goes to another ELB. You have this program, programming service in Node.js or Java. Uh, RabbitMQ is the one that glues everything together, apart from getting all the messages in the topic li lists and everything. This message, which is a lot of data, you go to Kinesis Analytics, so then you can do something more business-oriented, get something meaningful out of it. And the Lambda really, what does is they glue this part of this output data to go to another service, again, on top of ECS, Docker container. Exactly. Is that it? What would be the next thing you have, Phil? 
So the next thing is concentrating more on the analytics and we're probably going to plug in machine learning there and also incorporate into a data lake so the business can start analysing and building more of an insight into what our users are up to and what they find popular. Ah, that's very interesting. So you have some sort of an S3 for data lake and all the data goes in there so you can do even more business processing on top of that. Yes. Amazing. Thanks very much for sharing that with us, Phil. That was pretty, pretty great. Thank you for watching. This is my architecture.